Welcome to the next episode in China Between Meetings with your host Marian Danko, aka China Hustler. This series of interviews brought to you by We Hustle, a Shanghai-based platform for innovation and growth. We help international and local teams succeed in China. In these episodes, we talk about technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Today, I'm super glad to be joined by Yu Chen Zhang, um, aka YC who is a founder of iHuhua and also program director at Startup Leadership Program, which is SLP. And I'm uh, super excited to be also uh, one of the SLP fellow, SLP family in Shanghai, page five. We're going to talk a bit later about SLP. Before we join conversation with um, Uh, YC, uh, I just checked a couple of facts uh, on LinkedIn and I just found out that he graduated from three universities and he has very solid background in engineering software. Two of the universities are in the Netherlands, I didn't know about that, and uh, one in China, which is Jizan University. Thank you for joining. And um, my question would be, why did you join, why did you decide to, to, to pursue engineering? Um, was it your call? Or maybe it was your family members who basically said that's going to be something that you need to pay attention to. Technology is the future and you should pursue the career in this path. Okay, so um, nobody really pushed me or certainly my dad influenced me. Mm -hmm. So um, also that's probably the reason why I decided to go to Georgia University because my dad graduated from the same university in the 70s. Uh -huh. So we are actually alumni to each other. Um, So yeah, so um, he's an engineer, he late, lately started his own company, also an engineering company, um, and I was sort of influenced by that, uh, seeing things, you know, uh, I started playing with computers in the earlier time of my life, um, uh, playing games and, and, and trying to write some code, you know, even in high school, already, or also I did not really succeed, but okay. Uh, so. Um, Yeah, so yeah, university. It was not really, uh, an, uh, yeah. So, so it was not a bad, but it was uh, more like influence more from my dad. I studied uh, elect electronics and information engineering for four years mm -hmm. in that university. It was good for four years, but mm -hmm. then you mentioned that I decided to. Uh, so after my undergraduate, I moved to the Netherlands, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so the four years in Georgia university was good, but I felt that it was a bit too close to my hometown. Okay. Uh, which is Jiaxing. Is yeah, Jiaxing, which is like two hours, uh, no, half an hour now Okay. from Where's Shanghai yeah. and two hours door to door to my office in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you know how close it is. Um, but Georgia University in Hangzhou is also very close to my hometown. Uh, so I felt that uh, I missed the culture shock and diversity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, even among Chinese people that could be culture shocks. Right. right. So if I would have been to a, a university far, far away to the north or, or, or south, it would be better. So um, after that four years, I uh, think, okay, I'm tempted to go to another country. You know, when I don't have the culture shock I should have, then I want 10 times back. Right. Uh -huh. So I decide to, okay, maybe I should go to another country. Um, yeah, and then why the Netherlands? I, I had actually two options um, back then. So one is Singapore, right? Another is uh, Europe, basically. But uh, U.S. was not on the list because it was still like two years after 9-11. You know, mm -hmm. immigration to, to okay. the United States was still a bit tricky. Yeah. So, um, but Singapore was again too close. <laughs> I think, wow, let's go to Europe. And and in Europe, on. Uh, United Kingdom was of course very popular, but it was already like a bit expensive. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a entrepreneur in nature, right? So mm -hmm. I care really about the cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And the Netherlands in the Dutch university did not charge that much yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So because they are still opening up the market for Chinese students, uh, they want to, you know, they see it's a good stu it's a good market. Uh, the UK uh, the, has uh, proved that. So let's also go to China. Uh, but they were still like promoting the education in the Netherlands, so that's why the, the they did not really charge a high fee. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, uh, yeah, we we were charged like the same as the local students, and we were actually highly subsidized. You know, I mean, by who? I'm, I'm scholarship. Okay, scholarship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. So uh, it was good. Uh, economically was good, but also the university all very good. Um, 
Yeah. What are the names I, I can't pronounce? Uh, Twinter, that's uh, for my master study, then mm -hmm. for the doctorate, uh, University of uh, Technology University of Eindhoven. Mm -hmm. And that's also where, you know, the Philips uh, got started in Eindhoven. And, All right. And that is the most smart, the smartest city in the world. Uh, if you count, you're counting the, the number of patents per, per cap, uh -huh. per, per, per person. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a small city. It's a kind of boring. It's an industrial city, not not a typical Dutch city. Mm -hmm. And but it's it's um it's it's really good. I I, uh, I actually have an apartment there. Um, uh, it's it's very good. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, you yeah. bought an apartment there. Yeah, yeah. I have to have my apartment there now. Uh, it's, it's rented to 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 other students. Yeah, uh, not students. <laughs> well, it will be a disaster if I rent to students. <laughs> now to do to two young Dutch uh, Dutch 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 guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's arranged by the agency. So yeah. Um, why you didn't stay in the Netherlands? Why did you decide to come back to China? Oh, good. Um, um because of running my own startup. So you, you said uh, my Philips time was actually in the Netherlands, not in China. All right, sorry. Yeah, so um, yeah. you, you spent how many years with Philips? Five years. Five, five years. To, actually, 5.5. 5. So you started in years, Netherlands. Yeah. That's the only company I worked. You know? okay. um, after my doctorate study, I, uh, because I did my, uh, the, 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 actually the research project in Philips anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of natural to continue uh, with my real career in the same company, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was good. I mean, um, so... Um, what did you learn? Yeah, what did I learn? Uh, I did the, I did many things. I uh, also uh, learned a certain lot, uh, both on the professional uh, level, but also on the personal development level. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, so the biggest thing is the a project I did in the Philips Incubator, uh, which I got started with just me in the technical team, but eventually grow to 20, 30 people or so a month. Uh, it was like 20 to 30 million euro investment inside Philips. Wow. Yeah, it was, that was actually the first. Uh, now I can actually talk about it. I think it's safe to talk about it. Right. After 15 years or <laughs> it's the first uh, uh, um, the, the sleep wristband mm -hmm. uh, even before Fitbit. So mm -hmm. and we had the whole uh, artificial intelligence backed back in uh, 2009. Uh, the whole algorithm to do automated coaching to help people overcome insomnia. Do you still have the device? No, no, it was uh, no, I don't have it, and it never ended in the market oh, okay. <laughs> with 30 million euro investment. Wow. And that's how you, yeah, you can imagine that how a startup uh, eventually end up in a big corporate. Um, so uh, it was good experience. Um, I also personally got awarded to uh, appraised two years uh, role model and one year exceptional results being that project. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so that was really the highlights of my Philips time. Uh, so I also witnessed, uh, I, I was not a founder, but I'm, uh, I actually stay very close to the founders team, the management team. Uh, and everything was almost like transparent, right? Because we are almost like in the same office and I, I witnessed the daily conflicts the, the struggle they have dealing with, you know, the, 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 the booting, how to boot from zero uh, the customer base right. and dealing with the daily, uh, on a daily base, the, the uncertainties and unknowns. Not knowing uh, what we are already familiar with now, the lean startup methodology, the, the, what we had in SLP, right? But back then, everyone is, is uh, educated and trained in a, in, a, in a very conventional corporate manner. Mm. And I witnessed how 30 million investment got burned for nothing. Right. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely an experience. That, yeah. Why, why do you think, what was the uh, biggest reason why this startup didn't succeed? Um, so Exploited. eventually, the, the, uh, the, uh, that's, uh, that's shortly after I left and I, I got to know that from my colleague mm -hmm. that the, the top corporate strategy department, they think, okay, this kind of product is not for Philips. So mm -hmm. they just stopped the whole, uh, okay. whole thing. And the the founder tried to to sell it, mm -hmm. uh, but I yeah it's kind of hard yeah it's uh, you know it's a big corporate everything is proprietary, and uh, yeah it's just too much bureaucratic. So I also saw that how the you know how much money was put on the bureaucratic things, which was totally unnecessary for a young product company at this stage, right? Right. Yeah. Um, before we move to your current company that you founded, did you have any other entrepreneurial experiences in China? Uh, in China? Yeah. Um, okay, so 
if you talk about entrepreneurial experience, so I would think more like okay, in Philips or uh, I actually got my first company started in the in the Netherlands. Ah, uh, also, all right. Yeah, Can that, you just yes. uh, talk a little so, bit about yeah, that? Yeah, so 2012, I decided to quit uh, the only employer I had in my life, Philips. So and then start my first company. Um, it was uh, initially I want to no okay so it was more like I want to become entrepreneur but then I was like still like in very early stage uh, exploring a good idea mm -hmm. so if I could if I would have attend a program like SLP then I would not probably quit my <laughs> job before everything Shameless was consolidated money. yeah so uh, yeah but okay sadly enough then I did not have a, we we did not have a SLP program back then so. My idea was like, oh, I decided to become entrepreneur. I'm uh, fully driven to 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 have that to be become an entrepreneur. Then I should quit my job at the first thing, <laughs> right. which was I don't know, uh, kind of risky and and did create a lot of stress. So I I, I had my first idea I, I run with it, which is uh, uh, making a social. Uh, I call it a social menu mm -hmm. in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. uh, Putting the rest, putting the menu on a phone, right? <laughs> which everyone is already familiar, very much familiar with I think nowadays. There are lots of but that, in, yeah, in that, but that. that was in 2011. So you were one of the first ones. I probably the one of the first ones coming or doing something with this idea, but okay, what back did then. What did go wrong? Uh, no, it did, did not go wrong. But back then, the the, the 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 stopper was really we did not have a payment option, right? That was, yeah, because you want people to pay on the phone, but then we did not have Alipay or WeChat Pay or, you know, and it was in the too Dutch early. market. Yeah, this was too much, it, a, bit, a bit too early. So I, I worked on it for half a year. I even made my first prototype. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, uh, it's, it's iOS app. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I hired uh, some designers from the UK. <laughs> And it was quite expensive. And my first designer was actually a Dutch designer, sorry, and uh, who was my colleague in that in that project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started paid him like five thousand euro <laughs> to make the wow. first version of my app. Uh, that is not the cost effective. Yeah, that we're, we're not exactly now. So um, yeah, but that's an experience. That was experience. Sure. Yeah. Then I uh, then I went to uh, I, I just realized again that okay. Uh, could things be done differently? Um, then attended uh, some Lean Start workshop, and also got more heavily involved in the startup community, uh -huh. right? So, uh, and that's something I have um, observed a lot that people, while starting their business, they also got involved in the startup community, and it's another kind of network they're building, not only Correct. for their own business. So I had that, uh, and then I. Uh, realized okay, um, if uh, because the the social menu idea was okay, kind of clear back then was yeah, uh, there's no option for payment. Then mm -hmm. maybe it's very difficult to push it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then I come to another idea, uh, it's how to help people develop startup ideas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I it's also because I was very active uh, at that moment in the startup community in the Netherlands, but mm -hmm. also in in. Uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, somewhat in Germany as well. So uh, you, you you built a solid network of entrepreneurs. No, no, right? I did not. Yeah, I did not build myself initially. I uh, I was in the Startup Weekend mm. uh, community. I was organizing Startup Weekend in Amsterdam, but also participating and lately mentoring Startup Weekends in different cities. So oh. for for me, it was a really a good way to get into the startup community into uh, in a different city mm -hmm. uh, where you know nobody in a city. You know, when you go to a new place, you know nobody. You just you just say you're an entrepreneur. <laughs> That's the quickest way to tap yourself into network. <laughs> That's a good tip. That's a good tip. Um, so yeah, so uh, th that's that's how I got into. So so a year after I uh, I quit my job in Philips, and I of course I fin I, I stopped running that social media idea. And then then I started another company or business. Uh, back then it was called One Penny Entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's like everybody gives you one penny of you know contribution, mm. not really money, but right. uh, to help you develop the idea from different perspectives, like designer, crowdfunding marketing. for startups. Exactly, a crowdsourcing or crowdfunding. Um, yeah, so I took that idea to to Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was working in Rocket Space Incubator, and I talked to a lot of investors there. Uh, so people are really excited. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but then, after uh, three months' time, I decided to come back to Shanghai mm-hmm. uh, or China because if my uh, market is the entrepreneur, uh, you know, the start market, and, and I want to put it in a, a very like booming market, right? So China market, you know, if you talk about entrepreneur start, it's really booming uh, right. in 2014, 2015. Okay, so, so that's yeah. probably how the IQ yeah. Hua started. It, right? Yeah, exactly. So come back, uh, we made it more specific. So not only uh, let, let's let's be more focused on finding co-founders. Okay. So and it become an app. So before it was a, a web based mm-hmm. thing. So now it's an app. It's uh, and and why IQ Hua? Yeah. So uh, I think logic is very very simple. I always say, okay, if you want to run your idea start by idea like when I was in Philips, right? And I don't dare to, to tell my boss or my colleagues, oh, I want to run a new start by idea, right? right. You know, for bad reasons, right? It, it does not make sense. I mean, the next day you will have a special chat with a manager. <laughs> so, um, and you, you're not going to post an idea on LinkedIn because everybody will see that. Mm-hmm. And it, it would not be appreciated. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about Google or but certainly not a, a very traditional uh, big corporate, right? Mm-hmm. So where what can you do or where can you go right mm. if you have that idea and the idea is growing growing every day now of course offline can go to events like start weekend mm-hmm. but it takes time mm-hmm. right and even cost money to go to start weekend in different cities and so why don't we have online start weekend kind of place not like linkedin so mm-hmm. it's a different vertical not mm-hmm. for a, a corporate job mm-hmm. uh, but really for uh, future entrepreneurs or startups, people who are itching with some ideas. So that's how IHO comes into place. Mm-hmm. Um, it is different vertical. Uh, you don't worry about uh, coming across your boss on the platform. Right. If you do, that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it's kind of, yeah, it's a different vertical. You can, you can safely pitch idea and we do verifications on different levels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do name verification, identity verification, uh, even uh, job job uh, experience or education experience verification. So we, we actually lay pave the way the basic uh, way for trust, and above that people can build their own network. They can find co-founders. They mm-hmm. can, you know, it usually like takes about two years for someone to transition from a corporate person to entrepreneur. It gotcha. does not have it does not have it should not have overnight, right? It takes two years to come up come up with the idea. Uh, test the no, idea, yeah, nurture idea, idea test the idea, validate the idea. So that 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 period of time, you can have it totally, you know, leveraging on on the on this platform. Mm-hmm. But also building connections, right? You you mm-hmm. want to meet people from just different disciplinaries, not only the same skills you have, but with mm. different skills that you don't have. So yeah. So okay. right now we have three hundred thousand. That's uh, very impressive number. Uh, thank you. Yeah, every day we got like 500, 200 to 500 more mm-hmm. entrepreneurs from all over China. Uh, and people always ask me, hey, why don't only do Chinese? When, when yeah. it's going to so be... For yeah. now, it's only yeah. open for the Chinese market. Are you going to open up for foreign market in China and outside of China? Yeah. And uh, what do you think would be the challenge? Is it just simply translating the interface into English? Mm-hmm. Or it's more about the process as well and, uh, you know, taking into the consideration all the cultural differences? Well, certainly we, we they were taking into consideration culture difference or at least a language barrier. Um, but we do have foreigners using the platform. So now it is uh, in Chinese, but if you are comfortable with mm-hmm. Chinese interface uh, it, it, and you have a Chinese phone number, you can just uh, sign on mm-hmm. and, and use it. Um, and we're going to have English version. I've been <laughs> promising that for over a year already. Right, I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, uh, we uh, we uh, we do it. Uh, we will do it for sure. Now uh, it's public. Uh, it is public. Uh, well, no, no, the English I mean, version. No, your 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 promise is a public now. Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. So from tomorrow or after Chinese New Year, we're gonna put it on the on the to do list for sure. And uh, it will. Um, yes, uh, but I don't think personally, I don't think it's very difficult. Um, um, it's more like. Uh, uh, yeah, some. Uh, well, we we're still gonna decide on the big decisions on the UI design, but also whether it's gonna be one app or two apps. Right. Uh, and uh, for me, if it's only the foreign entre- entrepreneurs alone, it will be still quite small. Uh, so it's more like how we can mix both. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's only the language, right? And 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 eventually, you if you are a foreign entrepreneur, and you want to bring a new idea or new product to China, you don't want to stay in that 
following their zone, right? right? So I, I, I believe such kind of app should serve as a bridge or buffer between the, the, the foreign and the comfort zone and the real Chinese market. So yeah, so that there should will be some thinking and design over there. Yeah, great. If you have ideas, country uh, opinions, please. I mean, I'm uh, I welcome that very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. How about SLP? So I guess probably some people know about SLP, some people don't know. Yeah. Um, can okay. you just uh, introduce uh, quickly SLP? Um, when did you start it? Why did yeah. you start it? Sure. And um, um, how was it helpful for uh, entrepreneurs in Shanghai specifically? Yeah, sure. So SLP stands for Startup Leadership Program. Uh, it was not something I founded. Uh, it was uh, it was founded in 2006 in Boston. And then uh, someone else brought it to China in 2011. So that's what mm -hmm. that was all that were all before my China time. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but then I um, uh, had a friend who was leading SLP uh, in 2014, mm -hmm. 2015, and asked me to help. Mm -hmm. uh, to co-lead a batch there, that was batch, uh, batch three, I, yeah, batch three. Mm -hmm. um, then I did it. I enjoyed it. I also learned a lot myself, uh, and I definitely felt that such a systematic, structural training is totally needed for people again starting a new business when they're still corporate. And also because of I'm running so uh, I hope I, I, I encounter many people exa exactly like my you know Philip's time mm -hmm. the first thing they had running had is I should quit my job or should I quit my job if I want to do a startup mm -hmm. no don't quit a job but come to a program like SLP mm -hmm. if you want to do a startup test the ground that's a test ground and it does not cost you a job uh, you only spend like up to 80 hours mm -hmm. and that means like one Tuesday night every week or every second week for four months time you learn the methodologies that's what we're teaching the program and also you have the time to apply the methodologies and tools in your own project validate and test all the assumptions mm -hmm. and talk to me or talk to other mentors mm -hmm. um, if you I mean you need help on the feedbacks and how to uh, correct the, you know the directions things like that keep your job safe keep your income safe don't burn money and don't get uh, freaked out if you don't have a co-founder yet, or you or you will find someone. You will come across many potential co-founders when you're developing your idea. So, so that's the thing. That's a buffer. Whether you come to SLP or another similar program, I definitely recommend people to have this kind of buffer or the wrong way. Definitely supporting yeah. that. I, I did yeah. uh, batch five in 2016, 17. I don't really remember the exact time, but it was super supportive. Uh, Network-wise, knowledge-wise, meeting the right people, meeting mentors, getting uh, as much feedback as possible, and um, thank you for that. Thank you for running and putting it all together Great and building you. up this community in Shanghai. Um, so, been working for, uh, for you've been working with the startups, foreign startups, SLP for a couple of three, four years already. Um, there are definitely some common patterns, uh, some common challenges that foreign entrepreneurs. Uh, face in China, can you think about them and just uh, um, point it out? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the, 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 the number one um, pitfall or let's say uh, the dilemma is um, I, I met quite a few foreign entrepreneurs uh, who come uh, you know, a new idea because they're from a different background, they're from a different country and they think something uh, that is something new that you know at least in China that could be deployed here. Mm -hmm. Now um, I would say, okay, you have you, you mean you have a good starting point because you are a foreigner and you are relatively well connected to that expat network, mm -hmm. right? So that is a great testing ground for you to start with. Mm -hmm. um, but you should also quickly step out of that because that's a comfort zone. But if you want to tackle the real China market, you have to quickly step out of that. If you stay in the foreigner zone, that's a small market. Mm -hmm. Maybe not that small, but uh, for real business, serious business, you have to step out of that. So that's kind of that dilemma, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that's, that's, uh, that's entrepreneurs need to, need to deal with anyway. So, mm -hmm. so uh, step out of the comfort zone, try to understand the thinking the communication from a real 
Chinese person. I'm mm -hmm. not saying a returnee. Someone like like me will not be a, a good the target. Good fit, right? Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a returnee, so I kind of understand both worlds. You you need to find someone who is a local local, mm -hmm. and and trying to not not already trying to convince him or her on your product, but try to understand the thinking, the pattern, the communication, the habit from that person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the That's challenges. one. And, and uh, second is, uh, yeah, I, I definitely recommend, even you, you are not ready to take someone, a Chinese partner or co-founder on board yet, but uh, con continue, keep talking to potential candidates, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it takes time uh, to find someone as a co-founder. Mm -hmm. I think it could take like two years. So, so um, always keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and be willing to 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 talk about the idea and, and potentially seeing you know seeing someone as a as a potential co-founder and and I, we have a whole methodology on that right. I call that dating right you can yeah. never say okay I want to marry someone tomorrow I find someone to marry no you always need to first hunt and date um, and so so always yeah you, know, you, you need a local partner for sure and and just give yourself that enough time to to date with many different options of different candidates okay and the, another one uh, uh is uh, validate your idea mm -hmm. uh, and again validate it with real chinese customers right um, yeah and don't don't be freaked out by some negative feedback uh, always I mean it, it I mean even for me as a, as a local Chinese, it's uh, it's even sometimes can be difficult to understand, right? The the current consumer behavior, on mm -hmm. uh, again thinking patterns. So it takes time, and, and you have to just do do the validation test. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Those are the useful tips definitely to take into the consideration while doing business, starting business, starting startups in China. Um, before I let you go. Um, Please, can you um, define what innovation for you? That's a very big question. Uh, so, um, okay, so in SOP, we say innovation is when you are bringing something new from zero to one, mm -hmm. right? So, um, just for example, if you're opening uh, just, a, just a small restaurant, that's not really innovation. But if you are opening a chain of restaurants mm -hmm. and want to create a new brand, that's innovation, mm -hmm. right? So innovation is when you are meeting uncertainties. Uh, it does not have to be technical uncertainty, but mm -hmm. most of the time it's actually non-technical. It could be a, a business model-wise or it could be customer experience model-wise, uh, um, different things. So, um, yeah, so for me, innovation is the opportunity you as entrepreneurs could see and leverage and bringing something new from zero to one to the market. And important thing is you have to get validations and, and, and solid feedbacks from the market. So people, in short, people are willing to pay for what you do. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Really appreciate it for your Thanks. time. Thanks. Great to be here. Your efforts, your input. Uh, keep keep rocking. And then all the, I, I really like the work Mario has been doing for WeHustle. I mean, uh, a lot of good things. So I, uh, yeah, highly recommend people, more people to follow Thank you. Mario and we have so yeah, we need a community and, and, and networking uh, platform like this in Shanghai and all over China. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks. That was the episode in China between meetings with YC. Um, please do subscribe to our channels on YouTube and WeChat and stay tuned for the next episode.